So uh, here's an example for grade 12 physics here at James M. Hill, application of vectors unit. Uh, it's a pretty big unit, and so I wanted to get some examples done up online for you so you can check them when you need, except, of course, during tests when your phones and such have to be away. 18 kilogram object experiences two forces pulling on it. One is 35, degree, 35 newtons east, 25 degrees north. So think of your east as your horizontal, north as your vertical if you want. Uh, second force is 46 newtons east, 75 degrees north. What's that acceleration? So as soon as you see equations or problems with forces and accelerations, first thought should be Newton's second law, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. In order to do this, we need to figure out what that net force is. A little reminder, that net force is the vector sum of all of our forces in play. So up until now, we didn't have anything to do with these angles. Our angles were zero, or our angles were 90 degrees. Now we have to work with the components of each of those vectors, those force vectors, F1 and F2. We can only do calculations in the physics with the eastern components of each one and the northern components. And then in the end, we can put it all back together and figure out what that net force is, that resultant force. First, I will break apart uh, each force into its components. So 35 cosine 25. The uh, trigonometry horizontal adjacent side to that force will be cosine. That's going to give you 31.7. That's uh, an N for Newtons, not North. Its northern component, let's do that over here, is 35 sine 25 degrees. So most of the time, horizontal will be cosine and sine will be 25. And the excuse me, vertical will be sine. That works out to be about 14.8 newtons. And we'll do the same thing with the second force. It's got a component in the east. There's 46 cosine 75, giving you 11.9 newtons. And its second component in the north, 46 sine 75 degrees, giving us uh, about 44.4. Newtons. I'll make that a little clearer. Okay. So we have our components, and where we need to go with this is our net force, that in the magnitude of that net force is the net force in the east squared added to what the net force is from the north squared and then square rooted. So right below this, I'll show you where that comes out. That looks should look like kind of a Pythagorean theorem to you. Here's our object. If you want to pen that, there's an object there. Two forces are acting on it. The first force has an eastward component pulling on it this way. The second force also has an eastward component pulling on it, and it's pulling it east. So they're acting together. So because they're acting together, they will add together, which we'll do in a few minutes. Each of those for forces also has a northern component, kind of pulling up this way. Picture it pulling up on the object, but it's easier to see the triangle if I draw it over here. There's our second force, northern component. The, the result of all of those forces is that nice red line which makes a nice right triangle. So there's where our Pythagorean theorem comes from. So the net force in the east is the sum of the eastern components. The net force in the, in the north is the sum of the northern components. Okay? So there's no fancy equation to do, or fancy motion equation or force equation. It's just adding together the vectors, vector components. So we'll do that right here beside the triangle. So F net east equals F1 east plus F2 east. So that will equal 31.7 plus 11.9, giving us a total of 43.6 newtons eastward. And then down here for our triangle, F net the northern components is the first one in the north, added to the second 
forces components in the north, 14.8 added to 44.4, and that totals to be 59.2 newtons. So those are our two components that we're going to um, add together vectorly. So in other words, we're going to do Pythagorean theorem with them and figure out our net force. So I'll do that right below here. So our net force, remember those parallel line brackets mean magnitude. We didn't calculate the direction yet. 43.6 squared added to 59.2 squared. All of that has to be square rooted. So that's equal to the square root of 5405.6. Because we're just looking for magnitude, we just ignore the negative square root. And so the positive root or the principal root comes out to be about 74 newtons. We'll keep two digits as our problem started with two digits. All that's left, and it's the easiest thing to forget to do, is to figure out, though, the direction. We want the resultant force, which has a direction with it. How is this thing going to move, and which direction is it going to move? So our angle that it's going to make with the horizontal is the inverse tangent of the north, northern component, over the eastern component. So that's inverse tangent of 59.2 over 43.6. So careful with your calculators, make sure you do that correctly. You should get out about 54 degrees. We'll round that off to two digits. Put everything together. Gives us our net force. equals 74 newtons east, 54 degrees north. At this point, it seems like your problem is all done. Uh, but as you know, if you go back and double check the question, the question is not asking you for net force. The question is asking you for acceleration. Remember that. So our acceleration is our net force divided by our mass. 74 newtons, direction of east, 54 degrees north, divided by the mass way up here that said 18. Yep, 18 kilograms. So this object will have an acceleration of 4.1 meters per second squared. And acceleration and force are always in the same direction, so we do not have to do anything else with those angles. There we go, nice and neat. Acceleration of this object, 4.1 meters per second. So it's going to move about half of that of gravity pretty quickly. Uh, direction to the horizontal east, 54 degrees towards the north.